Kelly Hobart from Alpaca Direct and I'm here on Technique Tuesday and we are talking about the sawtooth shawl and this is a new pattern that I created and I created it in when I was thinking about our beginning knitters and maybe some of the difficulties they have with doing increases such as knit front and back and I was thinking hey what if I got this nice little scarf and did let them practice some bind, binding off on the to make the little teeth and then also instead of using knit in front and back for increases to go ahead and use yarn overs so it could make a little bit of a lacy detail so let me show you this little guy so this is a super quick knit project and you can make it for a last minute christmas gift i um started this on uh, last friday i think it was right jim mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I was able to finish it yesterday, and then it blocked and was dry. But you see how pretty this beautiful yarn is. And if you haven't seen this yarn before, this is our, it's called Sasquatch yarn. And we have some of these beautiful colors here. And I've specifically had them dyed so that they match with each other. So, um, the... Uh, the, let me show you what I'm talking about. So the greens would go with the greens, the gold can go. Do you see how they kind of match? And they've been dyed that way so that they look good. I don't have all the colors out here, but for every skein there is a partner so that you can do color work projects and have them go well together. So it's beautiful yarn. And if you look at the content on it, it's machine washable, a nice sock yarn, but also as you can see, great yarn for, um, not just socks, but for shawls. So this is 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. Now, I kind of like the nylon in there. Some people like the um, pure wool, but the nylon gives some durability to the actual finished product. So I kind of like nylon, especially if I'm gonna be doing socks where it's on my feet and I'm gonna be stepping on it all the time. But so for, um, okay, so let's get back to our saw, uh, sawtooth shawl. And you used yeah. that yarn for this, right? For this? Yes, yeah. I did. I used one skein, and it is pretty big. I mean, it's close to 70 inches wide, and at this, um, the tallest part here is about 17 inches across, and it's for a beginning knitter, um, as well as people who just want a project that they don't have to think about. And so this is totally awesome. Also, what I did on this lovely edge here, Jim, can you show them that edge? This is called the Channel Island Bind Off. And if you just finished your um, audition shawl, which was the Knit Pearl Hunter um, Knit Along, that was using that same bind off. And you remember how I told you that when you're learning a new skill, it's great to use that skill in three different projects. So this could be your second project that you could work on if you wanted some um, social knitting or just a project that's fun and super easy. This is it. Also, yes, Jim, that's a great idea. So every week, if you have not watched before and you haven't been on, um, we have a contest. And the contest is usually some kind of yarn or a knitting notion or something for a crochet. And we ask that you post comments in the comment section. Maybe tell us about a pattern that you work on. Maybe comment about something that I'm showing you that you need help with. Any of those things will get you entered to win for the contest. And don't forget to let us know where you're from. That's a great idea. Oh, and it's also great if you can share with your buddy. So if you think that someone is learning to knit as well and they need a little help, well, we're talking about new ideas every week of projects that you can knit and skills that you can learn. So you press the share button or the like button and then you can share it with your buddies. So that's totally awesome. So let's take a look at our um, pattern. I was thinking that I'll show you how to get cast on and then and how easy it is to start this pattern. And then, yes, Jim? Why don't you tell them about the contest, how they can, what, what it is this week? Oh, yes. Okay, so for last week, the Sueno DK, we just brought in the new tonal colorways, and they're new to us, but it's a uh, Sueno DK. It's one of my favorite, all time favorite yarns. And this is by Haiku or Scassell, is the one that makes this yarn. 
and it is uh, superwash merino 80% and 20% bamboo and this is lovely yarn and let me tell you why I like it the reason why I like the Sueno DK is that it has a bit of a tight twist can you show them up front here do you see how it's kind of have a tight twist but when you block it you get this incredibly soft yarn and what it is is it turns into something that is durable so this is great i've made lots of baby blankets and different things with this right jim mm -hmm. and baby um little baby sweaters all, it makes beautiful things and this swain old tonal colorway um it kind of gives you the idea that you're getting a hand-painted yarn but what's lovely about spray dyed yarn is that they're very consistent you know you don't get that look where you uh tripped and fell on a big blob of color is lands on your project if you're not alternating skeins right <laughs> and so i kind of like these tonal colorways because it gives me the feeling that i have a hand painted yarn but you don't get the price tag the huge expense or the um, color um, pooling that you might with some of the hand dyed yarns so on our hand dyed yarn which is exclusive for us, right? Right. So what is it that you show them about like how the colors work? So, so what you liked about it? Because you were well, mentioning that. I, okay, so if you look at this, do you see how this has a little bit of darker blue here and a little tiny bit of darker blue here? But it's actually very, I don't know, it's uniform. For being a hand-dyed yarn, this is dyed beautifully. And so I am really loving the colors of our hand-dyed yarn. The person who dyes it for us does an excellent job. So I am very thrilled about that. So that's why I'm excited about these color rays because you can use them all by themselves. And I didn't alternate anything. I just went straight from the skein and knit this. And it does look beautiful. I love it. And I knit mine on a number four needle. And that's why my project is so big and so wide. Um, but I kind of like this squishy feel of the shawl that is really loose and airy, huh, Jim? Mm -hmm. It feels just, oh, I wish you could feel it. Um, but if you zoom up on it, and it, it's, see if you feel it, it's just, oh, so squishy and soft. And will keep you nice and warm. So if you needed a last minute gift and you wanted to make something that was special, I mean, this is a gift that is, well, it's affordable and it is beautiful. Well, and is made by you. Uh, so this last weekend, Jenny Doan was here in our neighborhood. She was down at the college, and I had the opportunity to go listen to her. And if you're not familiar with her, she is a quilter. But what I love about her is that she just is who she is. And I'm, I'm, I quilt a little bit, but um, she has all these YouTube videos that you can watch, like how to make a pillowcase, how to make a little zippered bag. And she'll do it like in 15 minutes. You can whip up your own bag. And so she is so awesome. Um, but I really enjoyed um, listening to her talk. And she, she was talking about giving a gift. And maybe for some people um, might say that they, did, they were worried someone didn't appreciate their gift. And she said, you know, don't worry about that. And she related a story that she had seen or heard of about a blanket that was given to the thrift store. And then the person who got it, it changed their lives. They just adored that. So even if that person doesn't enjoy it, someone else will recognize that you've hand knit something and maybe they will get it and it will change their life. So you never know how it's going to change someone. Um, so you guys out there just keep knitting and giving gifts and don't have a concern about um, whether or not they're going to be knit worthy, I should say. Um, so um, I thought it was pretty neat. She said she does quilts for every one of her family members. And what she does, because she doesn't want them to hang the quilt on the wall and not use it because she feels like that's a waste. So what she does is she makes a throw for them and she puts it in a picnic basket and gives it to them. So in essence, without saying a word, she's telling them that it's okay to throw it in the grass and use it because she wants her stuff to use. So I thought that was a really cool thing. So anyways, but let's get back to our skills. I'm going to show you how to do this bind off. And hey. this again is called the Channel Island Bind Off and it's done very simply. 
Maybe you ask so, Kathleen, can you show them the pattern? Because we just posted it this morning. Yes, and this is the pattern. It's called the uh, Sawtooth Shawl, and it is free. And so Kathleen will share it with you. So let's get over here to our bind off. Oops, I'll bring my little pattern with me. If you look at the pattern, I put the instructions in the pattern. So you can find the pattern and when you're ready to bind off. It's, this bind off's a little bit more work, but I feel like it's definitely worth it. Show them what you're so, showing them so they can <clears> see. What is it you're doing? This is, where is our bind off? Broop, over here. It's right there. And on this finer weight yarn, it's harder to see, but wait till you see it in the chunky yarn. You'll see what I'm talking about. It's sort of similar to a Pico bind off, um, but it's not as pronounced. And what's it called um, again? It is called the Channel Island bind off. So first you start by casting on two stitches using the knitted cast on. And when you have your loop of yarn for the new stitch, make sure that that left hand leg goes in the back. And then I don't remove my right hand needle. I just go ahead and knit another stitch and then cast on that second one without removing it. Then it tells you to bind off two stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and bind off two of those stitches. And then I take the stitches on my left hand needle and move it over to the right hand needle. And Jim, you're going to have a video of this posted too, right? Mm -hmm. So then I'm going to knit two together. And then I bind off one from my right hand needle. Then I slip that stitch back over to the left hand needle and I repeat those steps again, casting on one and two, binding off. It helps to have a lace tip on your um, your needle. It'll make it easier for you to bind off the stitches and work this bind off. So I would venture to say, please use a lace tip needle to be able to do this. Otherwise it can be a little fiddly. And so I am gonna do one more set here so you can see what that looks like. And then I'll show you what this looks like on the chunkier weight yarn. Now you can use this bind off with any of your patterns. I think it would look good on mittens and all kinds of things. It would look great on so cowls. It would look good on cowls. And then I just flip that back over there. And you could see that this bind off here looks really awesome. So what's unique about it? Just it's just a little bit. It just adds a decorative edge. I think it makes the edge, keeps the edge from looking plain. Mm -hmm. And do you see how, like this would look kind of cute on the cuff of a mitten with a little, maybe one knit row and then a garter stitch row or something. I think it would look nice. So anyways, learning these new skills. And then, oh, let me go ahead and see if I can go to the edge and show you. You know, sometimes when you use the bind off, you may not have the correct number of stitches. So I wanna show you what I would do when I get to the edge if, oops, gotta bind off another one. And so that you can deal, learn how to deal with that edge. And I just kind of fudge it a little bit um, if I need to if I have the correct number of stitches and I don't have to worry about it. But sometimes you may not have the correct number of stitches. It's all good. The bind off will work. So let's do this one more time here. And this is a free pattern that's on our website. We just posted it today. Right. I'm trying to do um, like a simple collection for the newer knitters and... So they can try the yarn? Well, just so that the newer knitters aren't struggling all the time, because I feel sorry for the newer knitters. Sometimes doing that knit front and back and doing some of the increases and stuff are hard for them. So I thought, make a pattern that has yarn overs for the increases, since newer knitters do a great job of um, doing yarn overs without even thinking about it. I figured the yarn overs would be easier for them. And so I'm just binding off here. And then when I, after I do that knit two together, of course, I slap it back over onto this other side here. And then I continue binding off the one getting toward the edge. So this is like a six step process that you outlined in the yeah, pattern. Yeah, uh-huh. And it's what we have seen on Michelle Hunters and she calls it seven steps, but um, for me, I did it and I combined two of the steps together. So 
there you go. And then you would just pull your yarn through and then weave in your ends. So that is the Channel Island bind off. I, th I thought it was pretty cool. Anyways, okay, so now let's take a look and see if I wanna show you very simply on this pattern for beginning knitters a lot of times beginning knitters don't like um using stitch markers um or don't even understand what a stitch marker is and all st a stitch marker is is it takes the place of a um it's kind of like a bookmark in a book it's just keeping track of some certain section so, so on here what are you showing now <coughs> excuse me I'm showing them how to start the shawl pattern. So it says cast on seven stitches and we're going to do it with the long tail cast on. So then I have cast on seven stitches. And row number two, it says place the beginning of the round marker after the first knit two of row one. So after this first knit two in row one, you're gonna place a stitch marker, all right? And not work with your tail. Don't work with your tail. All right, so we're going to, oops, knit two, and then we place a stitch marker. Now, from here on out, I know that I'm going to be doing only increasing when I see the stitch marker. So I, I knit to the end of the row. Sorry, these needles in the yarn are a little bit being fiddly. All right, so that was the end of row one. And then row two just simply says knit until you get to the last two stitches. Now this pattern, on the edges, I say for a hint, if you wanna make your edges look better, just snug that up just a little tiny bit. And what it does is it cleans up your edges and makes them look better. So I would knit to my marker. Every time I see my marker, I do a yarn over. And see how easy that increase is? And it leaves a nice little edge. So I just finished row number two. And I did my yarn over when I saw this stitch marker. And then I'm basically gonna be doing that over and over until I have five garter ridges. So pretend that I have five garter ridges. And a garter ridge is simply this ridge right here, and it consists of two knit rows equals one garter ridge. So you want to have five of these. And then you're gonna be doing your, um, you're gonna be doing one more row before the end of the round. <clears throat> and I, I kinda have to do it over here. So after I have the five garter ridges, let me just see if I can make a couple more, Jim, because it's too hard to show them what we're doing. So that one, I had my yarn overs right here. And you'll see the yarn over is, the yarn overs are right here. Do you see this edge right here? Those are all yarn overs, made with yarn overs. So, that is the edge that is closest to your, your stitch marker. And you wanna know that because when you make your teeth, let's look at your teeth. See, your increases are done on this side and then after you get these ridges, the proper amount of ridges on these, then you'll be binding off some stitches. And then every other repeat is gonna be this. It's gonna be the yarn over, knit two together all the way across, and it gives you another nice kind of lacy detail without a lot of work, okay? So that pattern is super, super easy, and it's beginning knitter friendly. So for any of you out there that have need a quick project and wanna use beautiful sock yarn, <laughs> here it is. <laughs> it's totally lovely, and so, and I'm so excited about the colorway. I love this blue colorway. If, I feel like it would go great with blue jeans or black pants or just about anything. What colorway it's is totally it? It's beautiful. Um, it is the Coeur colorway. Okay. And we don't have one 
right here. But you can look at it. It's the colorway, uh, Coeur d'Alene colorway. We have the Hayden and one. So, it's close. Yes, and now, well, this Hayden one's different. It's gold. Okay. So, yeah. But this one, this one's really pretty. It has some kind of teal colors and some gold colors. So now what was our prize for this week, right? We had, um, we were gonna say that the prize for this week, oh, we were just gonna choose one of- That or the tartan. Mm -hmm. The tartan or the Hayden. And you guys choose whichever one you think you might like the best, Hayden or tartan. And, um, they're both beautiful. And with both the lovely, Hayden so. and Coeur d'Alene, we actually send a picture because those are the lakes that where we live. Yes, so and it send... was patterned after um, uh, pictures from, you know, a lot of my patterns are down by the water. It's right by our house. And so um, we, it's called Hayden Lake, and it is really beautiful down there. <laughs> so we have a little like postcard we put in the yarn yeah. for, for both the lakes. It's totally awesome. Um, so, okay. So for last week, we should look and see who the win. This was for um, the Sueno DK, and it was last week's prize. And let's see who was the winner of that one. Oh, Donna Melchior? Melchior? M-E-L-C-H-I-O-R, Melchior? <laughs> Congratulations, you won some yarn. So all you have to do is get in contact with customer service at alpacadirect.com, and we can get this shipped out to you in the mail. You'll love using this yarn. I hope you like using it as much as I do. I, it's like my staple, go-to, wonderful yarn that I enjoy so much. And several people said they shared the video with friends, so. Oh, good, awesome. That's totally fantastic. And so for this week, you guys, write comments in the, post comments in the comment section and you'll be entered to win. So, and this is the tartan and this is Hayden. And so you guys can choose. Let us know which one you like the best and we can send it to the winner for next week. It's a it's a beautiful yarn, I'm really enjoying it. I'm doing um, some simple projects that I, every week I'm gonna try and um, release a new pattern for the next four weeks so that we have some nice uh, simple patterns for our new yarn. <laughs> so anyways, I'm really enjoying doing that. Um, was there anything else I missed? Okay, so as we know, Simple shawls can make really colorful gifts. This took me a weekend. It was super, super easy. I can watch my favorite TV shows and not have to worry about uh, messing up on the project because it's super easy. How many yards was it that you had to do? I think it's 450 yards. Yeah, 450 yards. It's, it's, not, it's doable. I mean, when you're only doing the knit stitch and uh, every time you come to the marker, you do a yarn over. It's super, super easy to finish. Um, and then using that decorative bind off, the Channel Island bind off is awesome. If you guys get a chance to do it more often, you totally should because it's a beautiful bind off and it's not that hard. And I think it's uh, more subtle than the Pico bind off. It's um, less frilly, but it's still beautiful. And don't forget to use stitch markers. For those of you out there that don't use stitch markers, make them your best friend because then you won't come into the store going, I messed this whole thing up because I lost track of where I was. When all I have to do on this simple project was put a stitch marker and I know whenever I get to this side, I'm on a right-sided row. And that's really important when you're doing a garter stitch project where it's hard to see, they look the same on both sides when you start. So you, becoming friends with stitch markers is a beautiful thing. And no, when they say slip marker, it doesn't mean you fling it across the room and get rid of it. That's what I thought when I first started knitting. I didn't know because no one told me. They're like, uh, remove marker or slip marker. And I'm like, fling. And then they come back to the next row and they're like, knit to marker. I'm like, I thought you told me to get rid of the marker. It's like, no, I didn't tell you to get rid of it. I told you to move it from one needle to the other needle so you can keep on knitting. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, oh well. And don't forget, as you guys are making these beautiful gifts for people for Christmas, if they don't show the enthusiasm that you would like them to, have no fear. It may positively affect someone else's life down the road that you don't know about. So you just keep making your stuff, enjoying your knitting, 
and it will cause a positive impact on someone's life down the road and you'll have made this world a little better place to be. So you guys have a great week and I will talk to you next week and I'm gonna be talking about a project that we can knit, maybe something for ourselves. Maybe we finished our Christmas and we're ready to knit for ourselves. So you guys take care, we'll talk to you next Tuesday. Not yet.